Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> That's the intro. Just <laughs> welcome back to Omega Level. Omega, Omega Level. Omega Level. Omega Level. Omega Level. I'm Fat Nick. He's fatter Steven. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I was gonna say, but he's the fattest Steven. The fattest with the the maddest that's fat. We haven't, whatever, we haven't truly seen Fat Steve. Just wait until we're on year 10 of this cast. <laughs> I'll just truly let myself go. <laughs> I don't care anymore. <laughs> I had to have two seats to myself. This table has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, every time he takes a flight, he's got to book three seats. Like, I need the whole row. And we need to take all the armrests out. Yep, I'm Kevin Smith from a couple years back. Exactly, before the heart attack. <laughs> when he was doing too fat for 40. When he finally realized that he like was wrong when he was <laughs> mad at those attendants for telling him to buy two tickets <laughs> 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 oh man so we got quite a decent little bit to cover today yeah we're gonna talk about the netflix i guess original um anima which is a little 15 minute not like, anime yeah not anime like i thought <laughs> anima which is a little 15 minute like short film like musical short film by paul thomas anderson and tom york of radiohead mm-hmm. we're also going to talk about the netflix original movie i am mother and then we're going to wrap up Mr. and Mrs. X. It's the last issue. And then we're going to start Silver Surfer Black with its first issue, which is right here. And also, Stephen picked up a signed copy of Sandman, which is pretty dope. So we had to show that off. Yeah. And uh, just to announce the news that Sandman is being adapted into a Netflix original series. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be DC's most expensive TV series yet. Rumors that it's uh, north of $500 million. That's insanity. Mm-hmm. And it's actually Neil. This is why nobody else wanted to adapt. This is why HBO, when they were first like talking about, it, they're like, "Ah, eh, never mind. <laughs> we, we just put we all have that money this in Game, of, Game Thrones. of Thrones going. <laughs> we're good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Neil Gaiman's actually getting to do it as well. Like he's like, I'm pretty sure in charge of the whole production and everything, which mm-hmm. is awesome. Like it, it should be him. It's his story. Yes. So he's going to be there to ensure that it's actually good. That's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. I'm not uh, a really a Sandman fan. I don't know anything about Sandman. I've never read it. I'm going to read it now, so I know what's going on. Yeah, before Joseph the show. Gordon Levitt's just kicking himself. He's like, "God, why couldn't I just?" Why I couldn't I get that deal? I think he's still involved with the project. <laughs> not, from not? What, I don't think so, no. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, their efforts fell, uh, fell flat a couple years ago. Oh, man, that, yeah. that sucks. Because I assume they probably proposed the budget as well. <laughs> $500 million, <laughs> and they're like, no. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. We just spent, you know, $700 billion on GGL, I don't think you've ever made that, mu- uh, like that much money for any studio in your life. No, probably not. No. I mean, great actor. I love the guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> great actor. Oh, man alive. One of the most talented people I think I've seen. Dude. When I watched like a few episodes of uh, Hit Record. Dude, yeah. yeah. He's amazing, dude. I love I was him. Like, dude, this dude can play piano and sing as well. My God. <laughs> <laughs> what can this guy not do? He also learned like BMXing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like at least stunts on that bike. Never watched that movie, but I mean, that's cool. Oh, for, um, yeah, yeah, man. I can't remember what that movie was called, but you're talking about. Yeah, you'll post it here. No. Yo, how'd you do that? I definitely won't. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I wanted to see that movie too. I never did. But yeah, I heard that he learned like how to do like the stunt work, like mm-hmm. the the race, the bike racing and stuff like that. Yeah. For it. I was like, oh, yeah, why not? Bike parkour. <laughs> why not? Let's just yeah, let's just learn that real quick. Yeah. He went uh, Christian Bell for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm still like I'm a little bummed still that nothing ever was able to spin off out of the Batman, the Nolan trilogy with him oh, being yeah, a Robin, yeah. like getting his own solo movie. He could have been Robin, maybe even become Nightwing. Yada yada. Like that'd have been so dope. I saw a post about Christian Bell the other day about like um, even though he wasn't Dick Grayson, I know, but still, yeah. Uh, I forgot what movie it was, like um, The Prestige or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, when he did his little, little like uh, knuckle ring thing. I think it's Prestige. Yeah, okay. Apparently people thought that was CGI, and apparently he was irritated by that because he learned a trick just to, just for that scene. Just for that one because scene. Because he, he just had to do something like that. Wow. He couldn't gain or lose weight. So he <laughs> so he, like, yeah, he had to do something extreme. <laughs> well, that character also loses his finger, and I'm surprised he didn't just chop his finger off. He's like, <laughs> no, we're going method, baby. <laughs> I'm Christian Bale. He goes, John, wait for a moment. Yeah, <laughs> right? I love Christian Bale, too. Yeah. He seems like he's an, uh, an insane person, but <laughs> yeah, he's a great actor. Say, he seems like an intense dude. <laughs> yeah. Psycho the intense, Alan. but good actor, man. Good I actor. only watched American Psycho the other day. Have you <sighs> seen that? Are, are you kidding me? It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Really? I think his performance is one of the 20 greatest performances, male or female, of all time. I watched it the day after I read the book. The book is nuts. Yeah, the book's very nuts. I watched the movie first it's and n- read the book like a year or two later. Yeah, it's 80% shopping list or just categories <laughs> of what people are wearing, which is like kind of the point of it. I heard that like uh, he... or. Um, he put in the like the homicide scenes afterwards. Like what, bro, that into the, author? the book, yeah. Brett Easton Ellis, yeah. Did he? I don't know. That's if I remember I correctly, doesn't the book almost nope. definitively tell you that he was crazy? Oh yeah, that dude, like, like he didn't actually do any of it. Maybe uh, there's certain scenes. Like where, the like, movie is way. He's definitely like hallucinating some of those. Things. Yeah, but the movie is way more um, direct with it. No, not direct. I thought the movie left more up to interpret. 
Like, like he could have done it, but he also perf- maybe didn't do it in the movie. His performance is not how I pitch. Uh, Pitcher Bateman from the book, yeah, yeah not at all. But I loved it. No, he was amazing. <laughs> he was great as Bateman in that movie. That, the the business card scene, amazing. This one, it's one of my favorite scenes of all time in the movie. <laughs> I can't believe he the race bevel. Oh my god, <laughs> he's getting so angry. <laughs> So also, okay? if you hate Jared Leto, you get to see him get murdered in that movie. <laughs> Pretty early in, so you don't have to watch all of it if yeah, you don't no. like it. If you're just mad about him. Also, Joker. one of the best scenes with like him dancing to um, um, freaking Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> explain, what people don't know about Huey? <laughs> <laughs> He's putting on like a freaking clear raincoat and stuff. What do you call these newspapers on the? Yeah, floor I like floor? how they did like those were just their own chapters where he's just talking about musicians but they put that over certain Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Man, I haven't read that book in so long. I read that in high school. Really? Like my sophomore year. It's one of the most graphic things the book is and nuts, pornographic dude. things I've ever <laughs> that read. That book is nuts. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's very. not how I thought it would be, but uh, it's pretty good. Brittany Snell is a very creative, but he writes very disturbing work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've also <laughs> read and seen The Rules of Attraction. He wrote that book, and it became a movie. That book is really messed up. This is the, yeah, the only book I've read by him. He's a really great author. He writes screenplays now, and I've seen like two of the movies that he wrote that are original, and mm, they oh, weren't really? as good, yeah. I was like, oh, no, Brett. <laughs> you were right. so good. Well, what did you think of Anima? So Anima, um, for those that don't know, it is on Netflix. It just came out this year. It is a 15-minute like musical. It's not even 15. It's listed as 16 minutes, but it's like a 13-minute long thing. But it's like a musical. It's a music video. It's a p- <laughs> basically a music video. It's like a, uh, an experimental short film that is... A music video. <laughs> it's a long music video. That's all I can say. It's almost like that scene in The Big Lebowski where they're watching his landlord's uh, little performance, his right. little stage performance, mm-hmm. as a, as an entire thirteen minutes. <laughs> yes, <set. laughs> it's just like that. <laughs> it was very very weird. Um, it was very existential, which I expected seeing that Tom York and Paul Thomas Anderson did it. Tom York is of Radiohead. If you know, aren't familiar with him, I'm not a big Radiohead he makes fan. The music. Shouldn't even say that. I'm not a Radiohead fan at all. So I don't really care about Tom York or his music. So the music that was in it didn't really like capture me. I didn't really care. Like it was a cool experience watching it, I guess I would say. It was very, very odd. And it kept you like interested the entire all the way through all no, I'll say there wasn't a moment where I wasn't interested. I'm thinking about watching it again. I checked the time on it twice. The first time I was eight minutes in because I was like, my God, what the heck is going it's on? When here? he was in the gutters is when I checked. I checked eight minutes in, then I, when I checked it again, it was like eleven and a half minutes in. And I was like or no, exactly twelve minutes. It was like three, like five seconds before eight minutes, I watched it count to eight, and I was like, "Oh wow!" And then I did it again. It was exactly twelve minutes. I was like, "Oh my god, it's almost over!" And that's when, like, he was with the woman and stuff. So I was just curious, like, how long is this gonna go? But <laughs> like, I think I understood what the entire thing was about, yeah. and I just don't know if it was necessary. Like, I'm not sure if I liked it. You pointed out certain things I didn't really get, but yeah, I got the same like message. It's basically just some dude just going uh, with the repetition of life, just the mundaneness mm-hmm. of life, just riding the train, going Until to work. Until pretty much he just like can't take it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> he was about to lose it when uh, that little turnbuckle wouldn't let him through. Oh no, dude, he was getting, <laughs> he was getting mad. <laughs> then he flew over it. Uh, yeah, and then like he goes through like the mundanity of life, and then he. Uh, oh, I should also say Josh and I spoke about this before you got here. Like we were texting back and oh, forth really? about it, and he got most of the same things that we're saying too. Yeah, it's pretty on the nose. Yeah, it. it I mean. So it goes through all that stuff, and then he starts to, like, break free. And when he's breaking free, there's a scene where he's walking past all these people, and they're, like, falling down as he walks past them to, like, signify that, like, things are changing. And he's breaking free of the mundanity of society. And then he has, like, a little breakdown, I guess, as he sits down this whirlwind of he, stuff. He lost him. his social security number for Roy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, like, all this stuff is swirling around him, and then he falls, and he literally wakes up with his face over a grate. Because he's in the gutter. And I was like, oh my God, could that be more yeah, that obvious? That was like the most obvious one. Yeah. I was just like, okay. <laughs> and then he gets up from being in the gutter and immediately meets a woman who is like his, it turns into be like his companion. And then he walks through the rest of the short, through life as normal, doing the stuff he was essentially doing before, but he's with, he has, he's found love now. So now it's like either wash that stuff away for it doesn't notice him or it doesn't matter or it made it all worth it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, sure, love conquers all. Cool. We saw him like dancing with other like people. Like in their little circle, still looking like zombies. Yeah, true. Yeah, but they so. were like zombies with companions now. Yeah, yeah. Him and her were the it's ones almost that like they're living different. in like a George Orwell novel. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it was it was weird. It was unique. Uh, I definitely say it was, it's worth your time to check it out. It's only yeah, thirteen it's 15 minutes. minutes. Long. <laughs> like, yeah, it's thirteen minutes of actual watching. Like it's it's not. And the long. music's not bad. I mean, it's if nothing amazing. If you're into Radiohead, you'll probably love the music. Yeah. It was it was all right. And you'll just think we're like, uh, we're not true musicians because we don't love it. Yeah, I mean, I don't <laughs> like Radiohead, so. Kid a I'm not overly it. familiar with the music, but like the few songs I do know, like I do like. 
I don't think you do. Okay. What, <laughs> like Creep? That's them, right? No, that's R.E.M. Yeah, that's That's Creep. R.E.M. No, that's... Is it Radiohead? Yeah, that's Radiohead. Yeah, I, don't know. I love that song. Yeah. Uh, the best... Uh, the thing I like most about Radiohead is their appearance in um, the Scott Tinnerman episode of South Park. <laughs> Never seen it. <laughs> That's well. That's when he feeds Scott Tinnerman's parents to him in a bowl of chili, and he also gets uh, this. His favorite band is Radiohead, so he writes them a letter about how he has cancer and stuff, and they show up and they laugh at him because he's crying. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome! Of all and bands, actually, Radiohead laughs at and him. They voiced themselves. In that Are you episode. serious? Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. I'm always surprised that the people they get to come on and do that show, it's like be themselves. <laughs> the best cameo they've had was uh, George Clooney. When they he asked to be a part himself? of the episode, and no, they gave him the role of just doing bark noises for a dog. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> that's did. amazing. He later did in the movie. He got the voice of the doctor that told Kenny that his heart was placed was replaced with a potato, and he had about three more seconds to live. <laughs> 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 and he's like, "God damn it, it never gets any easier." And then he just whistles and just strolls off. <laughs> wow, <laughs> unreal. But yeah, let's get to uh, "I Am Mother," so another Netflix yeah, original. Another Netflix original, "I Am Mother." Uh, also was released this year on Netflix. Yeah, I think it was released like th- this month. I yeah, it wasn't very long ago. Yeah. It's a 2019 movie, and it stars an actress I've never heard of or seen before named Clara Ruggard, who was absolutely fantastic she in was this daughter. movie. <laughs> yeah, her name, her character <laughs> name is Daughter. And then there's a robot who's go- who is Mother. Who is Mother. Who is voiced by the actress Rose Byrne. Do you know who that is? That sounds familiar. Okay, so uh, have you seen Get Him to the Greek? Yes. She's in <sighs> that. Was she the um? Was she the pop star? She's the wife, the okay. pop star wife or whatever of okay. Russell. Brand well, she or whatever. left him. Like she was his ex, right? I think so. The one singing "Ring Around the Rosie" or whatever. She, t- she talking about her asshole. Yes, yes, I'm pretty sure that's her. I think she's also in Neighbors, right? With Seth Rogen, she's his wife. Oh, okay, yeah. cool, okay. Yeah, that's Rose Byrne. Her. She did the voice for Mother. Wow, she did a great job. Yeah, she did an awesome job mm-hmm. in the voice acting work. And right. then Hilary Swank is also in it as the character Woman, <laughs> and she did an amazing job. Fantastic performance by her. So Steve and I were speaking right before this. Uh, we started to do this podcast. This movie was absolutely not what either one of us expected it to yeah. be at all. Like neither one of us watched the preview. We just kind of read the description, saw the picture. We're like, "That sounds cool. I was like, this looks great. Yeah, let's watch <laughs> this." We were both expecting some very surreal, like existential, really out there, like movie. And I was it, trying to outsmart not, the movie the whole time. I was too. The movie <laughs> is not that whatsoever. It's a very straightforward story. Yes. Like I couldn't say straightforward. Like it is kind of surreal in parts. I guess there's like a partial little twist. Like the story is surreal itself. Like the movie's not filmed surreal. It's filmed very realistic. It was well shot. I liked it. Extremely well shot. Mm -hmm. It's filmed very realistically, but it's very, the story at times is kind of surreal with with what it's doing. And yeah, there is one kind of, I guess, twist in it, though they definitely give you enough information right before it's revealed to know what they're about. I thought it was obvious. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't catch it because I was w- trying to outsmart the movie, so I'm thinking about all this other <laughs> he's, stuff it he's could thinking be. way above <laughs> Yeah, I'm way out of what they were actually trying to do. <laughs> so, like, I don't want to go through the movie from, like, point to point, like A to B or whatever. I don't want to do all that. Well, dude, I got my bullet points. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the plot of the movie is that the human, like, the very beginning of the movie tells you that there's been some extinction event, and there are no more humans left alive. And then you see the robot mother taking these Im- like an embryo out of all these other embryos. And there's like 36,000, I think, is what the number yeah, was. Yeah, and it says there's like 36,000 embryos on board this. And some change. This, this area that we're in. We mm-hmm. don't know what they're in. I thought they were in a spaceship. You don't yeah, know. That's what I was kind of suspecting. Yeah, you don't know for the longest time what the, where they're actually at. Like, do, 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 do find out. Well, they tell until you. Until they have, a, you know, they find the mouse. Yeah. So that, yeah. But then, uh, so then they, uh, she puts the embryo in this, like, thing, and it's like 24 hours late. It has a 24 hour countdown. It's going to birth this, not birth, but it's growing like it's in a womb, yeah. this uh, embryo. Into being a child, and then mother raises this child. This is the test tube baby of to end all test tube babies. Right, yeah, because <laughs> there is no other. There are no other humans because it's like humans zero zero zero. Yes, <laughs> it, there are none left until you see her growing up with mother, mm-hmm. and it's finally it's one. There's one human. Yeah, and that, like once she goes to sleep at one night, it's like like humans or something like that goes zero zero one. <laughs> <laughs> there is one of them now. I did think it was very sweet how they shot like her childhood with mother. I thought it was awesome too. Yeah. It just looked like. She put stickers all over, because that's what children do. Yeah, that was awesome. It was very much felt like that could have been a person instead of a robot, and it would have felt the exact same. Like, they did I, an awesome job of, like, humanizing the yeah. robot. A very good job of I that. I kept looking at her, though, and, like, she, her head at least reminds me of Gladys. Okay, I was about to mention, so, you know, there's a ton of portal references in this, right? Really? She offers her cake multiple times. Well, do you want cake? The cake that's is from a portal. lie, though. 
Yeah. There was no cake. I know. There was a cake. But, but. there was a cake, but it's, that's a portal reference. She looks like GLaDOS was a portal reference. She's also snarky at times and has comedy that doesn't oh, really not, hit. Not like, nearly as snarky as GLaDOS. No, but like, <laughs> she's also snarky at times. And there's that one point in the freaking thing in the movie where uh, Daughter, you see her with her jumpsuit, which is a red jumpsuit, and she's got the top part tied around her waist and she's wearing a, like a white uh, tank top. The exact uniform that like your character shell. in Portal is wearing. Yeah, yeah shell. But she talks. <laughs> True, but still. <laughs> she doesn't respond to like, what's your name by jumping? <laughs> She's like, all right, you jumped. All right, you're responsive at least. Yeah, there's a lot of portal references in this, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, if they would have popped a portal gun out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> like, this, this movie would have been the greatest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is actually the prequel to Portal. God, I'd have... I'd have been so happy. That'd have been nuts. Dude. I'd have freaked <laughs> out. Have you seen the Portal short film? No, oh, dude, it's astounding. Dude, amazing, yeah. dude. Oh, my God. I love it. That dude needs to make movies. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that person that made that is the person that made that Hardcore Henry movie, but it could be wrong. I haven't heard anything about that. Could be wrong. I finally watched Hardcore Henry this year. It's yeah. about what I thought. <laughs> is it just like entertaining, mindless action? Or does the gimmick get old? It gets old. Does it? Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I, don't, I didn't know if I could stand that for 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I fell asleep. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's those words. That's why I've never watched it. I was like, man, am I going to care about this gimmick for 90 I minutes? I think Marion actually liked it more than I did because she stayed up and finished it and then... <laughs> then went to sleep? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I'm just too tired. I, I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's get back to talking about Mother. So what did you want to talk about with your... Uh, you said you made bullet points? <laughs> your things that you... Oh, I'm serious. Did you, no, I'm just joking. Oh, I said, do you have things that you want to specifically touch on? No, it's... The ending is kind of what let me down a little bit, but like then you... I said could see more that. about like your thoughts on it. I was like, it made it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But um, I loved the ending, but I loved what I got from it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I could I see how someone could get something else. disappointed. Like spoilers, uh, if you yeah. haven't watched us ever Mad before. Spoilers. I know there's usually like ten spoilers like on the tag it's for on every the picture. fucking video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't gotten the point now, all right. Um, I was disappointed that like she went and, like, you know, she sacrificed that one body. She sacrificed the mother body. To, like let her live, and then mm-hmm. like she just uses one of those other uh, dozer bodies. Oh yeah, so she's not. I actually hated dead. the term dozer. I did too, because the first like few times she said it, I didn't know what the fuck she was saying. <laughs> and I was like, what? What is she saying? Like I couldn't tell what was the word dozer, and then when dozer. I called it, it was dozer. I was like, is that supposed to mean something? I guess it's supposed to be because they bulldoze through people. I don't fucking know. I guess. I was also disappointed that we only got to see like the one like little like spider mech. Uh, it looks so familiar, like from some other sort of game, like. The one know. with the cannon on it that was drilling. Its oh yeah, through. yeah, 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 yeah. We I want to see some more shit like that, but um, well, it didn't have to get. It didn't yeah. need to get two Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as the reveal happened, it's like okay, we killed all humans because we wanted to make a better oh, human shit. race. Mother Skynet. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh, Terminator. Cool. All right. Cool. <laughs> oh, right on. Except right they're on. not resurrecting people. Right. Yeah. In Terminator, but um, and turning yeah, into she just went and killed a woman. I was like, oh, come the fuck on, man. <laughs> I liked that because it was the reveal of, like, woman had a purpose. There was a reason she was allowed to live and to do what oh, she was and doing. and then as soon as she was yeah. done, like, with now her, her test. Now her purpose is over. Yeah, okay. the test is over. Daughter passed the test. She's going to raise her raise her. She is the pinnacle now. of morals. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, or, like, human morals. <laughs> yeah, daughter is, the, you see her taking these tests throughout the movie, and you it's revealed later on, you find out that daughter is, like, the perfect human, essentially, like, the most perfect that you could be, right? Because she doesn't get, like, 100%. She scores, like, I think the last time you hear her test is, like, a 98 point. I think the reason why the she got a 98 yet. is because she wasn't willing to sacrifice herself in that one scenario. I think so, too, yeah. <laughs> you think that, okay. that was awesome. I loved her answer in that. So she's taking, she's, like, in school, like, doing class at mm-hmm. one point, and mother is asking her about, like, a really difficult scenario. Like, if you were a doctor and you have four patients and, like, here's some information about the patients and you can only save one, what do you do? And then, like, the other doesn't respond. And she was like, are you listening? And she's, she says something like, no, not really, or something like that. Like that. And she, so she asked her a different question. Like, if you're a doctor and you can save two patients, there's two patients, and you can save one of them, but you have to sacrifice yourself to do so, which one do you choose? And the daughter's answer is, like, really genius, honestly. She's like, what do I know about the people? How do I know they're not murderers or they're not, you know, like, these really awful, immoral people that are – technically worse humans than I am and less beneficial to society. So by sacrificing myself, I'm actually making the wrong decision to save the wrong person. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> well, I think the original question was like, this one patient has all the organs that will match all these other people for their problems. Do you let him die or do you go ahead and save him because he's going to die soon? Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Or you're also a match for everybody and you mm-hmm. can sacrifice yourself. To, like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, she's just like, well. How do I know that mm-hmm. it's not the wrong choice? It's like, so I'm the doctor. I'm I like more to beneficial. think that that was the one wrong question or the one question she got wrong. 
Who knows? <laughs> well, you think that was the, yeah, the one she got wrong because she wouldn't <laughs> sacrifice herself? Yeah. I honestly thought that was the one she got right because it showed that her well, morality was more than just herself. It was concerning all people. She was concerned with what's mo- like. It was a very robotic response, I thought. I what's think most Mother also said that she was learning humans. from that scenario, too. She was what? Mother was also learning, I think, in that True, scenario. true. But to me, it just seemed like that response was like, what is the most beneficial for all of humanity? Yeah. Not just this one or this one, the collective. It's a very robotic response. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a pretty common test book question for like ethics classes and mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> and you can see when she's taking her test, when like she finally takes that like the, the final test, it's like her birthday. I'm assuming she's 18. They never say her age. Yeah. But it's like her last test for her birthday, and she gets to choose like, and then right after that, she gets to pick who she wants her brother to be. So Which I thought was a was very emotional adult. scene. Yeah, I thought it was really like well I done. actually like um, for some reason it almost made me tear up. I was like, well, it was pretty beautiful. Yeah, it was, it was very beautiful, very sad, but it was also very like it was like bittersweet. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And also in that moment when she's picking that, like I, I thought she was picking her successor. Her mother's about to kill her. <laughs> for a moment, yes. For a moment, yeah. Mm-hmm. She also said there is no wrong, que- uh, wrong answer here. Oh, what, to the, yeah, to the, the choosing the, of the one, the brother. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, when you see her taking the her other test, like you can actually see like this hologram little thing, like an iPad that she's taking it on, and it very much so looks like the questions are questions you have on like job interviews. It's like. Yeah, it's the personality test God. questions. That's I what the test hate was taking. Those surveys I do too. For They're so annoying. But that's what reminded me when she was taking. I was like, I'd be like, Nah, bro, I'm not doing this. <laughs> for a moment, that's what I thought she was doing because she's just flying through them. Yeah, I thought she's she was like, no, like, no, don't no, care, no, don't dude, care, don't care, don't care. A a a a a. Like, oh, she's definitely failed. No, apparently she's just a fucking genius. No, yeah, she's <laughs> just super smart. So yeah, she was like the peak of like human morality. Like mother even tells her that. I don't think she says the peak. I think she does say the perfect like. But yeah, the perfect well, specimen. The perfect now. specimen, right? But her test scores aren't perfect because humans are fallible, like, and there's always going to be issues with humans, which Daughter illustrates throughout this movie as woman comes into the picture, Hilary Swank's character, and it starts becoming apparent that the stuff that Mother had been raising her and telling her wasn't true. Yes. Like, she left Daughter under the impression, well, <laughs> told Daughter that there was a, a disease that wiped out all of humanity. We kind of learned that that was false. Yeah, and that was Sort false. of, when she finds a little mouse... And yep. she's like, see, this thing survived outside. And Mother's just ignoring all her pleas. And it's and like, just, just test it. it. Just test it. See if it's contaminated. See if it really is contaminated. And she's like, nope. It's just incinerated. Mm-hmm. And there was a human, a very humanistic quality of uh, daughter was that she was unwilling to accept that, like, we just don't know. Like, we can't take the chance. It's yeah. No, we have to test. How do we know? Like, we can't be certain if we don't try. You know what I mean? Which led to her attempting to go outside and then she heard the banging on the door, and that's when woman was there, and she brought her in. Yeah. It's a pretty cool scene, especially with Mother running to the door. Dude, yeah, I love the few times they showed Mother running. Mm-hmm. That was also very Terminator. <laughs> yes. That must remind me of the liquid <laughs> T-1000 Terminators or whatever yeah. running. I'm pretty sure she's a practical effect. Like, I don't... S- if she was CGI, my mind would be fucking blown. Yeah, if she was CGI, oh my god, <laughs> there was the entire budget right there. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was monumentally amazing. Yeah, uh, I really liked the way she looked. I did too. Very, Very cool design. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, also, this had one of the most intense scenes like I've ever seen in anything. It made me feel extremely uncomfortable. Is when, because um, when a woman shows up, she's been shot by yeah, something. She says like me. she's been chased and shot by something. You don't know that's a dozer yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's immediately distrustful when she like hides somewhere. And she's like, "Mother's coming," and she's hiding her in like a. I'm not gonna say the basement, but like you know, it's like the it's where the furnace room. area was. It yes. looked like the Bowery. Mm-hmm. So she's trying to go find medicine to help her, and then mother comes in. I uh, guess because she's scanning everything. Mm-hmm. Um, well, mother came in to get rid of something. Yeah, she was throwing something away. I think yeah. it was the she found the gas mask. I yeah, think that's that right. Yeah, she dropped. was like incinerating the gas mask. Um, so she's just like, oh, there's a dozer here. She's like, wait, you talking about mother? She's like, wait, that thing's your mom. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> but um, when they try and help her or whatever, she just refuses she grabs like a pipe or something she wants to destroy mother <laughs> and then she gets her gun and shoots mother twice yes she takes her gun from <laughs> she daughter. says if it was just a few centimeters to this it would have hit my cpu yeah and then i've been done that comes in later obviously yeah. um but yeah when uh she actually accepts uh daughter's help instead of mother's like she has to oh, drill the into scene? the fucking oh bullet. dude that was rough dude, yeah that killed me i did not like that, that at all that killed me <laughs> dude, when she when she first when she cleaned it, I was like, "Oh, that looks awful." And then she pulled the drill. I was like, "That's worse." <laughs> she's like, "I have to drill it so I can get this wire like, in there." And I have to it drill out. into like, the bullet to pull it out. Yeah, and like, she nah. just, she's like, oh, uh, "With anesthesia, will be better." She's like, "I'm not going under." And yeah, I was like, oh, well, you chose this fate. This is gonna suck ass. <laughs> like, I either die in four days from this bullet, or I accept their help now and maybe die anyway. I'd yeah. I'd have gone under. Yeah, she well, she could have bought herself time. She would have just taken the penicillin, but obviously she didn't. Well, she waited too long. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. When they came in, the needle was, like, so she, she had taken it. started, be, like, she, well, she would have she, been going into shock at some point. She was starting to become septic. Okay, that's what, what I thought it was. Yeah. was. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then mother was like, well, when your organs start feeling, we'll talk again. <laughs> <laughs> so condescending. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, you could t- definitely tell mother had an issue with her, like, that human like, Yeah, because woman she's like, what'd you tell my daughter? Wasn't the perfect specimen. So she saw it as less than and destructive. So she didn't like it. Yeah. Well, and she was telling the daughter uh, ideas. Well, she was telling her the truth before <laughs> yeah, mother was ready to tell truth. her. Yeah. yeah, before mother would, was going to tell her. Which mother says that she was going, I, would, like, I was waiting to tell you this. I don't know how true that is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know if she ever would. We'll I, mean, I think really she would have eventually had to tell her when they were going to let them outside to go repopulate Earth and live on Earth. Had well, to if daughter point. didn't do something to upset her and, you know, make herself get burnt. True, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get her ass killed. So, like, the movie, the way that it's, it's filmed is very, um, it's very tense. And it, it definitely leaves you wondering through a lot of it. Right? Yes. Like, you don't know why a woman is there. When a woman starts telling you this information, like, there's not a disease. And she... She doesn't tell you immediately what is going on. She's like, oh, my God, you don't know. There's not a disease. And then it becomes, he starts talking more and more. And it's like she tells her that, like, there's robots all outside. They, like, they took over and, like, murdered all the humanity. Yeah. And you, but you don't know if it's true. It's not like you can't take her at face value because she yeah. gives you enough to be like, I think she's lying. Yes. And then mother also starts messing with daughter when she tells her that the bullet they extracted was the same caliber as the gun she had and that the robots, the dozers, don't use those kind of guns. Mm-hmm. And that was a fucking lie. Yeah, so the, yeah, and that's also a lie. So you don't know like what's real or not. And then a mother like bugs them later on, like bugs the bag, so she can listen on their conversation oh, later yeah. on. Uh, but mother also doesn't kill woman, and they yeah. offers her, well, they offer her help. She does at the end. Well, but yeah, but in after her purpose is fulfilled, whenever she's shooting her and mother's running at her, like daughter is like, no, stop, please don't do that. And then right. she listens to the daughter, like has some compassion and empathy. It doesn't kill her. That's and probably when she thought her. of the test at that point. I bet. I think no. Let's see what some uh, some thinking is. I think this entire thing was a test. I think from the moment woman shows up until mother leaves at the end is entirely the test. No one had ever gotten far enough for it. And that's yeah. probably why a woman was so old. Like you that's why that? she well, let them let her live. Yeah, because I think uh, she was talking about how other people were hiding in the mines, but they're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> she had drawings of everybody in a, in a book called Gods and Man. Also, speaking of that, I read a little uh, trivia about this movie. That um, so the, no one is ever named. It's only the mother, daughter, and woman. Mm-hmm. And the three names that are mentioned, Jacob, Rachel, and Simon, are all biblical. Rachel. Rachel, yeah, that's one of the names she mentions. Who's that in the Bible? I don't know, but that is the trivia I read. Okay. Rachel, I think it was Rachel, Simon, and Jacob are all names in the Bible. Okay. So the only three names we get are biblical names of real, like, of actual people. And then they're drawings, and it's in a book called Gods and Monsters. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do wish we could have seen more of the world. Like, yeah, we were barely get vault. anything yeah. of it. It looks absolutely, uh, looks like a wasteland. Yeah, it looks like a wasteland, <laughs> but it's also looked like a wasteland that's starting to be re-cropped, too, because they had all those cornfields. Yeah. yeah, they had, like, very large farm equipment. Yeah, huge <laughs> farming <laughs> equipment, dude. My God. It's all like a glimpse of, like, I guess, like, their facility or something. It looked like they were building, like, a borderline cyberpunk type city. You mm-hmm. see it for, like, a second. Yeah. Also, like, it looked like there was, like, black sand or something or soil. Yeah, it was really weird when she fell down on mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah, maybe it was a bunch of ash. I was like, is this a bunch of gunpowder? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I had no idea what it was. So as the movie goes through, like, everything is very murky. You don't know. Oh, very Jay murky. <laughs> Everything's very murky. You don't know what is real. You don't know who is lying to daughter and who's telling her the truth. And then it starts to become kind of more, um, not apparent, but it's like, because woman is a human and daughter can identify with her, she wants to believe her. You know what I mean? But at the same time, mother's raised her for, I guess, 18 years of her life. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't want to believe that mother has been lying to her. She doesn't. She has no predisposition to think that robots are bad. Yeah, exactly. So all she knows is that mother takes her. care of her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mother seemed like a very awesome mother. Yeah, she did. She, and she was very kind. Yeah, she sings a very like beautiful song in a very amazing and soothing voice mm-hmm. by, I guess, Rose Byrne. Right. I'm assuming yeah. it's Rose Byrne singing. I don't know. Yeah, as soon as I heard her singing to her, I was like, wow. I wish I could have had that as a mom. <laughs> that robot. <laughs> <laughs> Joke, I love you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so you don't know what's true, what's not true, and then it starts to become a little more apparent. Like, it starts to become apparent that mother is actually lying. Yes. Like, you don't know exa- specifically about what, but she's definitely lying. And it's revealed that there is no virus. There are a bunch of robots outside, and there was, like, robots killed humanity. That is all true. Even if she wasn't lying, though, like, when she went with woman to, like, her little hut or mm-hmm. whatever... 
Who'd want to stay there? <laughs> yeah. So eventually, daughter helps woman break out, and they leave. Right after mother tells daughter that she can pick her new her brother. Mm-hmm. As yeah. a, she keeps telling her throughout her whole life that they're going to have a family. They're going to start a family, but like they have eventually. to wait. They have to wait, yeah. like eventually. And what she was waiting for was, I guess, her to be 18 to pass her tests mm-hmm. to be morally like perfect, like so the most moral she can, that she can be. Her raise more kids. And I think picking um, her brother was also part of the test in that brother was picked and then daughter left. So even if she doesn't come back, mother still has another child to raise mm-hmm. and can try again. And it's still a test of her morality. And if it fails, oh my God, she'll I burn that baby. About, I just thought about that. So <laughs> I forgot. A woman also did tell her that they torch babies. Yeah, she was like, I've seen them torture infants. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> These robots don't mess around. <laughs> mother. Because they're right? all one. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, my God. So I just thought about this, that. The question that she gets about uh, if you're the doctor and you can save lives and blah, 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 is also kind of like very reminiscent of the ending of this movie. So the, of the situation, that daughter gets herself, and she leaves with woman. They trek through all this stuff, get down by the ocean, and there's all these like can, cargo container, um, train containers. Um, and so they get in one of them and like just open the door and walk in, and woman lives there with a dog. And she finds out that there are no other humans. They're all dead. She's the only one. They did used to live in a mine, like she had said, but they got flooded. And no one could have possibly survived that. And if they did, you wouldn't want to see what they look like now because they're probably all being tortured. <laughs> so then daughter realizes in this moment, this is what my life would be. I could help this one woman and stay with her uh, and I guess provide companionship with her and make her life easier and I could live out here. Or I could take my chances and I can go back and I can raise my brother and try to work with mother and with the machines maybe <laughs> and create more people and save more people. So she ultimately doesn't decide for her. Like, she, if she would have stayed with woman, that would have been the selfish decision to save herself. Mm-hmm. She ultimately decides to save humanity and go back, even at the cost of potentially dying and never be making it back there. So she makes the more, I guess, moral decision. Definitely the more robotic decision because it's for the collective. Yeah. It's to ensure the survival of humanity. Or not even survival, like the repopulation. It's going to be a hell of a job raising 36,000 kids. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, right? <laughs> Well, she's definitely going to have to raise brother to a point where they can have more oh, yeah, clearly, more embryos yeah. and then raise other ones. And then I don't know when they would ever get to live on the earth. Like, I mean, she did, like, she's going to birth more kids at that moment. Like, she went into that little facility and was looking at all the embryos. Yeah, at the very end, that's what I, I, that's what I thought, too. That's what I thought, I thought, I thought the final more. shot was almost like, was the opening shot not on the robot? Was it? Like, in his face? I can't remember. I want to say That'd the cool last was, shot was, like, reminiscent of, like, she's, she's now mother. Right. Which is clearly what it was. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> what it was. So, yeah, the end of that is that m- her and mother have this, like, intense conversation. Mother gets trapped in a door, and daughter wants to keep brother. Starts sawing off her own leg. Yeah, she's, like, she's about to, like, <laughs> take her own leg off, and then daughter puts the gun up, like, to her. Like, she's, she gets the gun back. And they have this, like... <laughs> just conversation where daughter's like let me do this like i can raise them i'm ready you taught yeah. me everything that i need to know and i'm ready to do this and then like the twist right before that is that m- all of the robots are mother yeah she's like and i welcomed like, you when you got back when all those guns were pointing at you that was me yeah when <laughs> when daughter gets back there's all these robots outside of the door to like enter like the facility and they all have these like mini guns yeah, pointing they're at actively it. drilling through the fucking door well, not yet they're not yeah, they are when they're having when that she, conversation. When, well, yeah, yeah, but when she first gets there, they're not. And like, okay, she put, yes. daughter puts her hands up. She goes, "I just want to talk to mother." And they stare at her for a second, and then they part ways and let her in. And she gets in, and she takes out all the little like lock things, or whatever I guess, mm-hmm. to where like the door, like the compressors, where the door can't be opened now. So then, while her and mother are talking, and mother's trapped, all the robots on the outside are trying to saw through the like they're burning through those locks. To, That's like, when that big old tank one. Yeah, is and the big old tank one's it. like pounding through it to. Uh, Get in there, I guess, and kill daughter. Like, they're trying to save mother. Are they scared? Well, they're definitely not trying to save mother because it doesn't matter because mother is all of them. So that body does not matter. But they're getting in there to stop daughter from doing something crazy. Mm -hmm. So they have that conversation, and daughter's like, you raised me to, like, to do this. This was my purpose. Like, I can do this. Let Let me raise him. And then mother agrees. That was, like, the biggest twist to me was, like, oh, shit. They, like, actually found common ground. Mother actually saw in that moment or... If this whole thing was a test, like, that was her passing. And she was like, okay, she passed. She is ready. This is the one to raise humanity, to give instill with them at the very beginning the morals and values they need to grow up. And then, like, she mother puts the gun, like, grabs her hand and puts the gun up to her CPU. And she's like, if you ever need me. And daughter's like, I won't. And then shoots her. Yeah. And then all the robots stop and they just leave her there. Yep. And that's when one of the robots shows up at woman's place. And she walks in, she looks around, and she tells woman, she was like, curious, isn't it, that you managed to survive all this time? It was as though there was a purpose for you. And she turns and slams her door. And I was like, oh, well, she's dead. Yeah. 
Is which I think the purpose was a morality test for daughter. With woman. Oh man, you're right. With that little dialogue, she, like she let her survive as almost if there was a purpose. Yeah, and then not because anymore. she was the ultimate morality test for daughter. That's what I'm saying. Like it was the doctor test. She could have stayed with woman or gone back and raised humanity. And well, she I'm saying like to go yeah, back. you're th- like it's not, that's not even a theory anymore. That just confirms it. Yeah. And when she told her like she was allowing her to survive just for that scenario. Yeah, that was the entire point. That was the yeah. only reason. And she said that like she was a, when when she first shows up, she was shot, and it's very clear to me after the movie, like after you know the whole story, like oh, the robots were hurting her yeah. in that direction. They wanted her to go there. They wanted daughter to find her because she's gonna go there and pound on those. Because those doors. robots, I mean, there's no way like they would have let her survive. No, it's not possible. <laughs> yeah. And even when mother's powering up, she's the collective conscious of all the robotics, so she probably always knows what daughter's doing. Yeah. At all times, because mm-hmm. so she's never sneaking around. She always knows what she's doing. I would imagine. Well, daughter's sneaking around. But you're talking about mothers not sneaking around, right? No, like daughters. Like only when the power goes off. Oh yeah. And mothers like there's no electronics working. Other than that, whenever mother goes to bed at night, she definitely knows what daughter's doing. Yeah. At all times, I would imagine. So what would you rate it? I give it an eight out of ten. I thought it was very well done. I I really really liked it. I thought Claire Rugger was awesome. Very excited to see her moving forward. Also read that she is from Denmark. So if she has an accent, her American accent is an Australian movie apparently. Yeah, well, her American accent was like one of the categories on Netflix said Australian Australian movies. movies. I was like, oh, the director might be Australian. I would never suspected. (laughs) But yeah, Claire Rugger's from Denmark. So if she has like an accent, her American accent was brilliant. Yeah, I thought she was American. I was like, where is she from? Like Wyoming? Like she sounds like she's from America. Yeah, she was great. (laughs) I mean. uh, I can't really think of an example of like someone that's a foreigner that like when I hear like their American accent, I don't believe it. Honestly, most times like performers are very like do very very well with an American accent. Most times, I can't. Like I agree with you. I don't know how it would be difficult, but obviously, like I don't have an accent, so. Well, you do. You well, just I mean, don't know it. I do. Yeah. yeah just right. I am American. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think of some instances, and I, I can't really. But I've definitely heard like. People that aren't from America do American accents where I've listened to it and I'm like, mm, that doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard before. I think that would sound odd to me. Okay. But I can't think of it. But there's just examples. so many different like ways that people speak here. So it's I just kind of believe God, anything. Dude, yeah. <laughs> they, there's no specific, like, I don't think American sound. Yeah, exactly. I guess like the most people just think of like some sort of yuppie accent, I guess. I guess. Or I guess most people probably think of us as like the Southerners. At least I know Japan does. Like, I think they still <laughs> think America. that we think of, like talk like we're all like Yee-hoo! yeah. They still think we talk like cowboys. I think <laughs> it's still like it's, the, it's still the Wild West out here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you said uh, you gave Mother an eight as well. Yeah, we'll be overall. I give her a, like right about that. Yeah, I thought it was a very creative story. It was very well done on a very minimalist way. I thought it was shot very well. It, no, it's shot excellently, but like, it's not this super tech futuristic thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's it is pretty minimal. It's pretty minimal, but the effects that they have in it, if they are effects, are great. Like, they, all those robots couldn't have been robots. I don't think. Oh no, those had to be effects. And then the flying one was an effect, and like the, the farm things were oh, those, yeah, were yeah, effects. Those effects. all looked great. But those are all in there for like a couple seconds. All, yeah, it's yeah, seconds. Yeah, <laughs> they look great. Mother herself looks awesome. It had to be practical. And she oh, looked. Yeah. If she wasn't, oh my god, <laughs> that, that CGI was brilliant. Mm-hmm. The closest thing we'll, uh, I assume Portal will probably be turned into a movie at some point. I hope so. so the closest dude. thing we have to GLaDOS for now. <laughs> yeah, and it was very well done. Yeah. And Rose Byrne did an excellent job as the voice of Mother. So, yeah, you got Netflix, check it out. It's worth a watch. Yeah, absolutely worth your time. Definitely, definitely check that movie out, especially if you're into sci fi. Let us know what the trailer like depicts the movie because I didn't watch it. I'm actually going to watch the trailer today to see like if it, no. if it frames it in like, a different light or whatever. To me, it was awesome like watching it without having too much context because when Woman shows up, Hillary Swank's character, for a little while in the movie, I was thinking, okay, so she used to live here. She is daughter, like, grown up 30, 40 years age <laughs> from where daughter is now. She's, like, been let escape, and she's going to reveal this at some point. Like, so I'm thinking way past what the movie's actually doing. Like, that's not at all true. <laughs> we'll say, like, at some points, like, the tone, like, changed at some points. It made it seem like it was going to be, like, a horror movie. It, it definitely got very, like, suspenseful and mm-hmm. horrorous for a moment. Yeah. It def- or for a couple moments, it definitely did. It was very misleading. Oh, yeah. And I don't know why they, like, had that tone. Like, because it was just, like, straight up, like, oh, okay, we're turning this into a horror movie It's just now. red herring, just to throw you off, I'm okay. sure. Okay. Venom did the same thing, but that's because that movie was just inconsistent as hell. Yeah, it's because they filmed it as a horror movie, <laughs> and then parts of it an action movie, parts of it were a comedy, and Tom Hardy's just like, I don't know what we're doing! <laughs> All right, so as the whole Rogue and Gambit super fan over here, what do you think of the ending of this? So, I have loved this series. It has been my favorite series that we've been reading, bar none. This uh, this series that we're going to introduce in place of it is going to be dope as shit. Yeah, <laughs> Silver Surfer Black is going to be amazing. But Mr. and Mrs. X has been absolutely my favorite series we've been reading, but it's because Gambit and Rogue 
are my two favorite Marvel characters. They're one and two. Rogue is one, Very Gambit's understandable. two. understandable. They're amazing. So that's why I love this. I loved the little five-issue mini they had before this, and then it led into Mr. and Mrs. X. Oh, man, it's awesome. And I think, I, get, I think Kelly Thompson, the writer for this, is a fucking awesome writer for these characters. I bet she subverted your expectations for this series hard. How do you mean? Because, I mean, you already said that you never expected to go to the Mojo- Mojoverse. Oh, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> I never expected to get a fucking Rogue and Gambit year-long series either. It's yeah. like 12 issues. I didn't expect to get a 12-issue maxi Rogue and Gambit series ever. Yeah. We got the, we got the Gambit and Rogue mini, or Rogue and Gambit mini. That was five issues. I was like, oh, that was awesome. Now we'll get another one in 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> and then it led into a, oh, this a maxi. Is, this has to be referenced in future X-Men comics. It doesn't have, they don't have a choice. They fundamentally changed Rogue. Yeah, well, yeah. Duh. And they, well, <laughs> honestly, they put like... And Gambit to an They fundamentally extent. changed Gambit because he finally accepts completely who he is now. Yeah. He's like, fuck it. Like, well, I am both of these And now he's things. not just the King of Thieves. He's the King of Thieves and Assassins? Yeah, he's the King <laughs> of the Thieves and Assassins Guild. So they and both, he's a fucking X-Men. So they both got an upgrade in, to an extent. Yeah. Dude, so the way he escaped with the little ball... I was yeah, like, that's, that's genius. Also, like, that made me wince. Is, like, I was like, when the hell did he get cut there? And did he just put, like, a bunch of BBs in his yeah, wound? Yeah, he just put a bunch of BBs in He's like, I need these for later. <laughs> smart. <It's> smart, but <laughs> I guess, painful but as fuck. Damn. Yeah, right? And I love that uh, when Rogue picks the lock, Belladonna's like, oh, so you, he taught you how to pick a lock. And he's like, you're getting proficient at picking locks. And he's like, yeah, it's something Remy taught me, like, in the very beginning. Didn't think I'd get so much, so much use out of it. I was like, yeah. hanging out with him, I got to pick a lot of fucking locks. <laughs> a lot of people hate him. She's probably used to being bound, though. Giggity. I mean, if this is, this series was any indication, they definitely like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're a bit into that stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we started out with uh, Remy. Should I call no, him Remy or? Uh... Mm-hmm. <laughs> that just happened. Right. All right. So he's been put. In the catacombs of his little thieves go because in, where the last issue let off, they were he was no longer welcome there. He's no yeah, longer yeah. the king of thieves mm-hmm. temporarily. And, and him and Rogue were captured. Yes, they were captured. Uh, he was told by uh, Kandra, this girl that's now in a young body, that um, it wasn't apparent to me until this last issue that she was supposed to be like a fucking fifteen year old or like oh, a thirteen yeah. year old. It wasn't apparent to me. Adolescent, whatever. Yeah, didn't realize that. Uh, she told uh, Remy to Gambit. To choose between sacrificing Rogue or his ex-wife. Yeah, Belladonna. His new wife or his ex-wife, Belladonna. But uh, those both came with stipulations. If he sacrificed his new wife, then Cantor would leave oh, and yeah. let him remain as the king of thieves. But if he chose to save her and sacrifice Belladonna, then he was exiled and he would never be allowed back in their territories again. Yeah. So they came with like... She lose, w- lose. She clearly wanted him to sacrifice Rogue because she wanted to take Rogue's body. Yeah. Yeah, this is all to get her back to like her full grown body, so that way she can be back at max power. And she's apparently like they're trying to tell you that she is ultra fucking powerful, which again is illustrating how powerful Rogue is in this series. That Rogue is the body she needs to use her full power. Oh, I, I guess and Belladonna. Who, who, I don't know anything about her, but she says that she would suffice too. Yeah, Belladonna's also really powerful, but I also definitely thought that Kendra was lying. No matter what, she was going to try to sacrifice Rogue. It didn't fucking matter. Oh, pro- she said it was like well, well after he had an hour to think about it, and he. Got his BBs in his mouth and stuff, and he planned this out. He's like, I'll sacrifice myself. And she's like, I thought you'd say something stupid like that. So, you know what? Maybe I should just sacrifice all three of you. And he's like, I thought you'd say something like that. So, <laughs> Yeah, and then spits a fucking kinetic charge the BB at her. Yep. Which uh, explodes. But yeah, somehow he had a collar on. I guess he somehow deactivated it. I don't know how. Yeah, that was one thing that was kind of confusing to me is how he was able to use his powers because he shot the BB, and then he broke the chains and kinetically charged everything. Yes. I don't understand how he's able to yeah, do that. Yeah, he started going ham. Yeah, if his dampening collar, because <laughs> Rogue's was definitely still working. So I'm assuming when he got the BB out, he somehow deactivated it, and we just didn't see it. Yeah. He had to have. Yeah. Otherwise, that was a huge plot hole. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Rogue, she reawakens, I guess, and like that's her little lockpick thing. She's talking about Belladonna and stuff. And he's like, yeah, if you guys could stop chit-chatting, I, I'm just single-handedly holding yeah. back this army yeah. over here. I'm just beating an army up by myself. <laughs> I kind of need some fucking help. So then Rogue temporarily uh, starts siphoning everybody's powers. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, it's happening because I'm afraid. I just need to concentrate. All right, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> which... I like I'm that glad they, that they showed that, yeah. I like that she, they illustrated that. So in certain situations, she's still going to, like... Exactly. There's still going to be problems. Yes, there's If she gonna, gets too afraid, she's like, oh, fuck, I, I, I got to fucking... It's like she has anxiety, honestly, is what it is. Yeah. And if she can't control it, people are fucked. <laughs> yes. Every, everybody, <laughs> everybody dies. Goes, she's like, just give me a minute. She's like, we don't really have a minute. <laughs> yeah, Bill Donald's like, it's a little more time than we have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you take a minute, we're dead. Yeah, then, so she's like, oh, I got it. Punches Kandra in the mouth. Mm-hmm. She's like, I don't like beating up kids, but that felt pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Not that I'm going to keep doing it, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was pretty satisfying. Yeah. I like when Rogue first broke out. It was just like, 
a half page panel of her breaking down. It's like pretty much she was like, "Y'all are fucked now." Yeah, I was like, "Oh yeah, you're you're kind of screwed." So I gotta say though, like, <laughs> out of every character that we've seen in like throughout every issue. I still don't like the way Rogue has been drawn in any of them. Really? Yes. I, I think this one might have been one of the worst ones. Like I don't know. Her proportions were awkward to me. Hmm. I do think that whoever this artist is draws all the female faces very similar. Oh, absolutely. Like, Kanzer <laughs> looks almost exactly like Xandra did. Yeah. Yeah. Also, kind of disappointed with like, the ending of this. We still never saw any like more of that baby, that egg baby, whose name I, is slipping my Zandra. mind. Zandra. Right. Who became Zandra. Right, yeah. Zandra. That's, she's definitely going to be using something else. She has to be. Oh, it has to be. And we never got more Deadpool. No. I, I didn't expect more Deadpool. But I was hoping for at least a mention of Kandra or, or the Xandra or to come back around to her. But no, that never happened. Yeah. That character's... Oh, my God, dude. She's going to be fucking OP as shit. But anyways, after Kandra got straight decked in the mouth, <laughs> <laughs> Gambit goes on to tell everyone, he's like, listen up, everybody. I am the I'm the king of thieves, <laughs> and I'm now gonna be the king of assassins. But I'm also an X Man, and I'm also a thief. So I'm all dead at once. <laughs> this is we like can be multiple people. Tommy Wiseau went to Louisiana <laughs> yeah. for a year. <laughs> I'm the I'm king sorry. of thieves. Should I stop? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But yeah, so I love the ending. How like it empowers Gambit. Gambit empowers himself, where he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I finally going to accept myself. Like Rogue is dealing with all this shit to be able to have to accept herself, so she can control like her powers and stuff. And it's like, he also needs some introspection to be like, you know, I am, I have been a bad person. I have been a thief. And I can use what the X-Men have taught me and what I've learned through them, what I've learned through being with Rogue to better this situation. So fuck it. I'm not going to abandon this. I am your king. And I'm also an X-Men. And when I'm not here, my dad speaks for me. Yeah. And you'll listen to him or I'll come back and you won't like it. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I like that shit. That was awesome. Yeah. He's like, I like the fact that everyone keeps trying to replace me, but they all keep failing, which just tells me. I am supposed to <laughs> yeah. be here. I should be telling everybody around, hey, he's he's definitely the king because yeah. we can't stop it. Which kind of ties into the beginning of the issue. We were talking about every time he goes back there, he feels torn apart mm -hmm. because of his multiple identities. Yep. He says, screw it, I'm all of it. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. He actually got some growth out of this. Yep. And uh, I think they were about to dip because like, uh, Rogue says she hasn't been able to contact the X-Men because I think something's going on with that series where I think they actually like all are Yeah, so what's happening is screwed. every X-Men related series that's out right now is all coming to an end. They're all getting ended, and there's going to be one X-Men series. It's going to be a weekly that's going, <laughs> yeah, but it's going to reshape and remold the X-Men universe, and it's going, it's going to end a lot of the bullshit that fans have hated for the past, like, 10 fucking years. It's going to change a lot of the inconsistencies, and it's going to make everything into, like, not a new universe, but it's going to try to correct a whole bunch of shit and then relaunch X-Men. And then they'll get probably a bunch of series after that. I'm really excited for that, honestly. They're going to tie up a whole bunch of shit. That sounds interesting, except for the fact that it's weekly, which is going to be expensive as hell. Yeah, dude. I'm <laughs> definitely going to read that. The fucking X-Men's my jam. Yeah. That sounds cool, though. And I, for some reason, I'm, I'm blanking on the fucking writer that's doing it, but it's somebody very well known that's fucking awesome. Like, everyone's super excited Tom about King? it. Tom King? No, fuck yourself. <laughs> Someone's super excited about it. Dude, I read it just yesterday or the day before. I was reading about some shit. There was a thread on there that was like, is this me? Or am I, is it just me? Am I the only one obsessed with Tom King's writing? And I was like, fuck yes, you are. But there were so many people that were like, his Batman series overall is not that great. Or it's, it's good. Bad. It's good, but there's parts of it that aren't that great. But overall, it's pretty good. And like fucking everybody loves his vision work, his Mr. Vision Miracle was work. Apparently magnificent. They love all that shit. And everybody universally is like, but Heroes in Crisis was trash. And it's unfortunate <laughs> that the only real things I know about Tom King are Heroes in Crisis and the few Batman, that, Batman issues that I read that I thought were fucking garbage. <laughs> So I was like, I don't like Tom King, but apparently I need to read Vision of Mr. Miracle. I read, I think, the first arc for Batman Rebirth, and if he was writing for that, it wasn't bad. No, he was writing Detective Comics. I'm pretty oh, sure. Okay. I don't think he's writing Batman, Batman, but I'm okay. not positive. Never mind then. I, I could be fucking wrong on that. <laughs> well, back to Mr. and Mrs. X. We're almost at the end here. But I specifically, well, to clarify myself, I specifically looked up Batman, Tom King written issues and read them to see how different it was from Heroes in Crisis, and I did not like his writing style still. I was like, man, he fucking sucks. Because you're just like, how's this guy have a job? Yeah, I was like, this guy's <laughs> fucking awful, and these issues suck too. Uh, this guy, if he if he ever has this sent to him, he will hate us. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure, dude. Fuck you, Tom King. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't hate you, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you, but Heroes in Crisis makes me not want to read anything you've yeah, ever Heroes written. Heroes in Crisis was awful, man. You got to get some shit up. That was fucking <laughs> terrible, dude. That was fucking awful shit. Did we even talk about that yet? Yeah, well, yeah we Josh got to and I wrapped okay. it up. It was fucking awful. Okay. You, got, you didn't have to do it. All right, so... Um, you had to sit that one out. Yeah, I had to. All right, let's wrap this up. Uh, All right, so I am mother. <laughs> <laughs> 
So they're finally about to leave, but I guess they're told by uh, Gambit's dad that they can't leave without visiting whoever this lady was. She's like a friend of the family, it seemed like. She was a matronly figure. <laughs> yeah, she somehow wasn't completely burnt by the fact that she wasn't invited to the wedding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she wasn't invited to the wedding, and they didn't see her whenever they came into town. She was like, well, but you're going to stay for this. Well, yeah, then finally just like, all right, we do have the balance, and they get back, and um, Rogue keeps teasing Gambit about like, how he was cuddling um, that a baby. spiral baby. Yeah, she keeps saying that he has baby fever, so they're heavily trying to yeah, put the idea into your minds that, like, at some point, Marvel may be planning, or maybe Kelly Thompson's just herself playing the seeds that, like, they can have a kid. They're going to have an Omega baby. Yeah, oh my God, An, an Omega-level baby. A fucking baby with that Gambit is a biological Rogue. child of Gambit and Rogue is going to be insane. It has to be broken. Yeah, it has to, that, that, that baby, whenever that character becomes, has to be OP to shit. has to be born Omega-level. What power do you think it'll have? Dude, if it has the powers of absorption and kinetic ability at the same fucking time, like, I think X-Men are done. <laughs> we have the X person. That's all we need. We, we got this one. That's all. What about the Phoenix, though? I mean, give that one the Phoenix. The Marvel's done. <laughs> Let Phoenix raise this baby. <laughs> <laughs> then it's over now. That one just becomes the one above all. But, yeah. Kissing faces were still odd, but better it than the last one. At least they actually sure. had lips. <laughs> yeah, right? At least Rogue did. So, as a whole series, what do you think? I loved it. I get the com- like. I loved it because of Tobias on it. So as someone that's like in you know a Rogan Gambit veteran, a Rogan Gambit mega fan, it's very much worth reading if you're a fan of those characters. It's worth reading if you're an X Men fan. If you're not a really big fan of those, like, like you and me? Josh really <laughs> aren't, you're probably going to be very bothered with a lot of the inconsistencies, inconsistencies and issues that the series has. It's not always drawn pristinely. There's a lot of a lot of the artwork is not very good. The colors are all great. The coloring is Especially great. Especially whenever there's explosions and like actual combat, it looks great. Yes. Uh, the story is kind of lackluster at times. Like if you don't care about Mojo, they waste half this series on that. Yes. Yeah. Like four or five issues. That's is very questionable to me. Yeah. Like when this is all supposed to be about their relationship and them and they just throw them into like Especially when the first arc starts off with such a fucking bang with Deadpool and Xandra, like that was fucking dope. And then it goes into this for no reason. I thought it was interesting. Mojo. Then again, I've never known anything about Mojo, so I like Mojo as his, an introduction in his universe. For me, I thought that was pretty cool. I like Mojo in the Mojo verse, so I enjoyed that. I assume a lot of people will be like thought like, "Oh, this is very weird." It might be turned off and just stop. It is very fucking weird. But if you know anything about Mojo, it's he's a very weird character. His, his verse is very odd. He's very he's fucking creepy. Yeah. He's a weird dude. But as like as an overall series, like I don't know. Like I said, if you're a fan of the X Men, fan of Rogue or of Gambit, it's very much, much checking out. I mean, if you're a fan of Marvel Comics, period, I think it's worth your time just to read the Zandra arc with Rogue and Gambit and Deadpool, because that's very fucking well done. That was incredible. The Mojoverse stuff, you could probably you could probably skip the entire Mojoverse and come into the last three issues of the Thieves Guild stuff. Oh, and still And be then catch up. all that, yeah. and then you didn't really miss much. <laughs> like, well, you would miss the evolution of how Rogue's powers yeah, I was gonna say, became that's a this big way. Thing. Yeah. Like, th- I think this series is ultimately going to become, I hope, very important. I guess that was the whole reason for the Mojo versus to put her in a situation where, like, her powers would be unlocked. Exactly. They had to do something to but be able to. I feel like do they, they could have done that, like, I don't know, a little bit better. Like, I feel like they cleverly. could have done that through Xandra still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she was clearly an Omega level telepath. Well, regardless, now that we finally wrapped up the series, uh, if you watched all the episodes, let us know what you thought about the series. Yeah, well, let us know what you thought about Mr. and Mrs. X. How amazing was it? How wrong is Steven and Josh? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now on to uh, Guardians of the Galaxy issue five. <laughs> right? <laughs> you mean Solar Surfer? Oh, did you talk about that with Josh while I was going? Yeah. Oh, well, then Guardians of the Galaxy issue six. What are you talking about that? <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I was about to say, dude, <laughs> did you not watch last week? We talked about both of those. <laughs> we wrapped up that arc. So why I bought this. Yeah, I was like, you fat here. fucking moron. Okay, <laughs> so as someone that has no idea really of anything about Silver Surfer, I never f- thought he was interesting. I, in, in fact, thought his design was pretty fucking dumb. Pretty bland. Bland and fucking dumb, because I was like, this is just a dude flying through space on a surfboard, yeah, and it's literally called the Silver Surfer. Who cares? Fucking stupid. <laughs> right? But the surfboard's so, sentient. So as soon as they were... <laughs> is it? I mean, it <laughs> seems like it, because... Okay. Yes, it is. But yet again, that shows my ignorance of this character. No fucking clue. <laughs> I know the character of Silver Surfer. I'm, I'm decently well-informed on him. I'm just not a <laughs> my fan. My introduction to him was the god-awful Fantastic Four 2 movie. Right. Rise of the <laughs> Silver Surfer awful. or what the fuck ever. <laughs> yeah. Um... I've known Silver Surfer, and I know a decent bit about him. Where Galactus was a cloud of yeah something. It was stupid as fuck. Fuck that movie. Yeah, it was awful. 
I've known Silver Surfer for a while, and I know a decent bit about him. I'm just not really into him. I don't really care about the character. I don't seek him out to read stuff. If he's in it, that's cool, but like, I'm not trying to read Silver Surfer. I don't care. Yeah, in fact, when you both, like, when, when Josh and Nick suggested, hey, let's read this, I was like, God, fucking why? <laughs> because Donny Case was writing it. Was, I read was this the issue reason. today, right before we started recording. It's fucking dope as hell. Yeah. Donny <laughs> Cates. Donny Cates is the fucking best <laughs> writer in comics. 100%. He's the single best writer. That's out now. He's the antithesis to Tom King. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Donny Cates is fucking incredible, dude. His Thanos wins is genius. What he's doing in Guardians of the Gust right now is amazing. Mm-hmm. This first issue was awesome. I, it makes me really want to go back and read his entire Doctor Strange run just to, to see how he did that universe. I've read some of it. Death of the Humans is fucking awesome. I've read that too. If you haven't read that, it's fucking great. Yeah, they talked about that in Guardians. Yes. Yeah. When fucking yeah, Lockjaw it? shows up, <laughs> fucking <laughs> Beta Ray tells uh, Star Lord, Star Lord's like, oh, how come I didn't know about this? And Beta Ray's like, not many people did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I assume that's because not many people read that story. It's because uh, in humans is not like, it's not yeah, that not big. Right now. Yeah, like they have their fans, but it's not, not the X-Men or the Avengers or the Fantastic Even Four. Even though they're so similar to the X-Men. Well, because they're so linked. They're tied into it all the time. Oh, really? X-Men versus humans is a huge storyline. They're basically mutants. They're just mutated by the Kree, right? Essentially. It was the Cree, right? It's um, Cree yeah, gas. Almost positive, but usually yeah. like they the Terrigen that. gas. Yeah. yeah. Terrigen gas. That's mm-hmm. right. My introduction to that was when I was trying to re- get into Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, right, yeah, she's introduction. Human. She got hit by that gas. Yeah, that was like, mm-hmm. human. I was like, what the fuck is this? Kamala Khan was a character I thought would suck, and she's badass. <laughs> I like her. I read like 10 or 11 issues like when she, she first got her own series, and I didn't really care oh, for no, it. Oh, no, no, no. You should read more current stuff. Okay. I thought she's like, uh, they have she's like grown now. The, they have like the Magnificent Miss Marvel that's out now, I think. Yeah, that's Kamala Khan, I'm Or sure. Marvelous Miss the, No, they couldn't do Miss Marvelous Miss Marvel. I think, it's, I think, it's I think magnificent. it is Magnificent. Yeah. It's it. the Marvelous Miss Maisel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. that TV show. I guess she's a cool character. Uh, she was a super, like, she is like a comic book nerd. Oh, absolutely. That became yeah. a superhero. Yeah. <laughs> And I becomes fucking Miss Marvel. I heard that she re- recently finally had like a confrontation with her family, and I guess they're accepting who she is. I don't know. I haven't read the newest, like the the brand new stuff. No, I stopped reading after the beginning because I didn't really care for it. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dug the art. I just didn't care for her as a character that much. I thought it was cool when she actually had like a run in with Wolverine when he no longer had his healing powers mm-hmm. b- before he died. <laughs> that was a good issue. Which time? <laughs> <laughs> the most recent. The most time, recent I time. <laughs> He dies about every two seconds. So yeah, there's like four Wolverines right now. Jesus, really? There's Old Man Logan. There's. I thought they. He, I thought he finally went back to his universe. Uh, well, or there's just that died or series something. is still going on. So good. Go I'm pretty on. sure. There's Old Man fucking Logan. There's Logan in, in Infinity Watch. Isn't there an Old Man Hawkeye now? Yes, I haven't read. I don't give a shit. I don't fucking care about Hawkeye. Uh, then there's the uh, Infinity Warps. <laughs> imagine, Emma Frost fucking ex- I uh, imagine Logan. Old Man Hawkeye is literally just him being like, God, I wish I still had the strength to pull back my bow. <laughs> I'm not a mutant. <laughs> I would assume Old Man Hawkeye has to deal with him and Kate Bishop, but I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Hopefully it's him in a retirement home. I mean, the original Old Man Logan, Hawkeye's in it. Oh, is he? He's the, mis- he's the Professor X in that, movie, in that comic series. Really? He's the guy that Logan's trying to, or that's trying to get Logan to help him. Yeah. That's fucking old Hawkeye. Okay. Old, it hurt Hawkeye, well, what other ho- Oh, What other Logans are there? So I'm saying, there's Old Man Logan, there's current Logan that is the Wolf. Uh, there's current Wolverine that is um, doing the Infinity Watch thing. Then there's the Infinity Warps Wolverine, and then I'm almost positive there is still another Wolverine. I'm almost positive. X twenty three. Well, yeah, but she's gone back to being um, X twenty three. X twenty three. She's not Wolverine <laughs> anymore. I mean, I think she still minorly references herself with that, but in her, she just had an, an ongoing that just ended a twelve issue series um, that ended last month. And yeah, she was X-23 throughout most of that. Like, she referred to herself sometimes, like, come on, you're fucking Wolverine. But, like, it was not a constant thing. Okay. But well, anyway, Silver Surfer Black. Holy shit. The freaking artist for this. This is a variant oh, cover. It's a fucking variant. I can't see it. I'll put the name up here. The fucking <laughs> artist. Artist. The fucking <laughs> artist that uh, Donny Cates is the working arsonist. with. arsonist. Yeah, the arsonist that Donny Cates is working with on this issue, or this series. Oh, my God, dude. He leaves Je- Jeff Shaw with fucking Guardians and moves to this, and it's like, do they just give him the best artists? The first page I did not really care for, because when you see Galactus, he's, like, very wavy. Mm-hmm. He's got curves on his face. I mean, he's a curvy individual. <laughs> he's a very curvy individual. <laughs> it, threw me the, it threw me off. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but then immediately after that, you see his stone-cold face as he's watched... He's talking about all, all, these these, all these names that he's mm-hmm. had. Like, he's 
mostly known as the Silver Surfer, but for many of these worlds, he oh, was yeah. known as Death mm-hmm. when he was the deliverer of Galactus and stuff. His harbinger or whatever, his herald. He's the herald of Galactus. Herald Galactus, sorry. Idiot. I'm ignorant. <laughs> He's also so he's just watching as all these civilizations energy. just get destroyed. He's talking about how this warrior planet didn't deserve its fate, even though they're like war hungry. Mm-hmm. And this other planet, how it's just very young. It's just like a newborn planet. There's just just now getting life, and it's very beautiful and like like harmonious or whatever. And Galactus feasted on it as well, even though it was not very much of a snack for him. Yeah, it was like barely a snack. And then some other planet I can't really remember is probably very unimportant. Screw that planet. But as it goes, <laughs> Surfer is like actually having emotion. And he's getting like more and more progressively upset about what's going on. He's very and he's, st- like, and he's feeling very regretful, and remorseful. You actually see him like have tears. Yeah. The way that he's written in this is incredible. Like Donnie really understands the character. By the end of it, like I fell in love with the artwork. Absolutely, I fell in love with the artwork, and I was like, "Do I like Surfer as a character now? I, I think what I the love hell him. is going on? I love him as a character." <laughs> <laughs> so then it explains this first issue explains how. In the Guardians of the Galaxy, they get shot. <laughs> Fucking Proxima Midnight shoots a black hole gun and tears apart the fabric of reality, and most of them get sucked into it. And this explains how they got into that. And it's because Silver Surfer was pretty much like, <laughs> I Beta guess, Ray Bill, har- harness your power. Yeah, Silver <laughs> Surfer was like, I guess this black hole don't know, this black hole doesn't know who the fuck I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he willed them the fuck out of there. He's the reason why we got that series. Yeah. Thank you, Donnie Cates. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Silver Surfer, we're able to have what's going on right now. And the, the Guardians. So, like, he was able to save all of them, but in doing so... He saved everybody that got sucked in that black yeah, hole. Yeah, but in doing so, he had to stay. Yeah. Like, he wasn't well, able to make it like, out. how he's floating and stuff. He's going with it. He sees, like... He uses all his power to actually see the trail that's going. He mm-hmm. follows all the turns and stuff somehow. He sees these other people that aren't, like, uh, Star Wars or what the hell ever he said. Star Jammers. Is so- <laughs> what you're talking about? Yeah. Wh- what was the word? Star Jammers? It was a group of people that were in there with him that he saved. People I don't know. <laughs> he's they're in the Guardians series. But barely, right? He saw, I thought they were in their own different series now. They may be, but they were in Guardians. He's about, okay. Oh, that's going to be in its Guardians of the Galaxy annual. That's what that uh, little yeah, yeah, the said. little thing was talking about. Yeah, but yeah, he saves them, and then at the, uh, he gets sucked further into the black hole, and he's talking about like he's getting torn apart as he, he gets thrown into like this darkness, and, and stuff. he falls for fucking years. Yeah, years, years. and years. <laughs> These other people will just be like shown about like the cosmos, mm-hmm. but not on his fucking watch. <laughs> like other entities, like uh, wouldn't be able to handle what was happening to him. They've been like torn and ripped apart and destroyed. But he's like, I'm the surfer, so that doesn't happen to me. Yeah, he sees like glimpses of light, but they disappear like very quickly. Mm-hmm. I guess which it's leads like the into birthing this, and death of this stars. world that he goes to. Mm-hmm. We'll find out why. Yeah. So he goes to this planet because he sees that it's a planet of terror and stuff. It's, it's his world is darkness. I must go to it. <laughs> and like Steven said earlier, not on my watch. He's, it's eons <laughs> away. So if other people, they would live like lifetimes before they die. It. Yeah. And then lifetimes again and die <laughs> multiple times. For him, it's just moments. Yeah. I guess because he's, he's, a, the, he's, he's a the surfer. Silver surfer. Yeah. He surfs this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he straight surfed that darkness. He did for real. <laughs> so he goes there. Um, he sees this like ominous door. Mm-hmm. And then, like all these other beings that look just gigantic. Yeah, these gigantic galactic-sized beings. Yeah, uh, he offers peace. He's like, I came here. He, when he lands on it, he's like, it just smells of like rot and decay mm-hmm. and metal. Yeah, and metal. And for some reason, metal. Yeah, it was, well, yeah, that makes sense after this. But yeah. Oh, I guess probably because he's like working or something. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he offers peace. And they get in a fight with him. And he's like, he's just fighting just to end the fight because he doesn't want to fight. Yeah, and he doesn't want to like harm them really either so he's mm-hmm. definitely holding back a lot it's a pretty cool action sequence yeah it's awesome yeah i guess like you said his surfboard i guess is sentient because mm-hmm, it it's is. like uses it like a razor or something mm-hmm. like, like on the wind yep. that's what he says I, I think at one point uh i think he killed them i think he killed them no that he put them like a sense of sleep like he not made him a con- knocked him unconscious okay. when he birthed that son yes yeah, so awesome no, but when he conjured a son out of fucking nowhere <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Silver Surfer is just like, I mean, in this fight, <laughs> conjures a sun and it like shines a light onto this world that was in darkness and they slumber. Yes. And so, yeah, he leaves him there as a message for anyone that would try and extinguish his light, I guess. Yeah. But it also comes at a cost. His hand turns black. Yeah, his hand like turns black, which Silver Surfer black. Yeah. Now we know why it's called that. Yeah. So hey. I assume at one point he's going to just be completely just swallowed in darkness. That's like what his, I'm assuming. His, his shining light of of hope mm-hmm. will be extinguished. Yeah, yeah. So he leaves those bodies there. He goes to the door to see what they were like guarding. It turns out that they were like, I guess, fallen gods of like a forgotten pantheon. Yeah, it seems like. So he's ready to beat gods. <laughs> yeah, because he's gods. Silver Surfer. So what's behind this door, Nick? 
So the door like opens and he gets like pulled into it. Mm-hmm. And there's like this odd word bubbles that are not like anything we've had in the, in the issue previously. Oh, it's pretty cool. Like I forgot when they were talking to him. It's just alien. Yeah, it's alien word bubbles. You can't they, read what they're what saying. What did they say? You can't read it. No, he, he spoke it though. He translated for it. Oh, I don't remember then. Ugh. Damn it. Why? It said, it, it said something like they do it for their God or something. I think that sounds familiar actually. Said something well, like turned, that. I guess their god is Null. Yeah, so Silver Surfer gets pulled into the fucking door, and it's Null. Of all beings that could be there, of all characters, it's Null. Standing with his fucking huge-ass sword, and he pulls the Surfer in, and it's a, he's essentially like, you have sting, you brought light to my darkness. and like, that's not what I wanted. That's what he hates. Yeah, he hates <laughs> that shit. Because if you don't know about Null, he's the only being in all of Marvel that existed before the dawn of time. He's the god of symbiotes. He's the only being that existed before Sorry, the dawn of time. Symbiotes. Do you, are you not hearing me right now? Hmm? He's the only being that existed before the dawn of time. I know. Him and the other seven million. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because every series and every comic book ever has a character Some that existed in, before yeah. the dawn of time. But Null existed before this universe was formed, and he lived in total darkness. He totally, he actually existed before the Celestials. Yeah, and he existed in total darkness. And when the light came and this universe was formed, it fucking angered him. And he's been on a mission his whole life ever since then to extinguish that light and return everything back to darkness. That's what Null's about. So Null don't like that Silver Surfer just created a sun over this planet of darkness. Yeah. He's very unhappy. So some Null trivia. Like he said, he exists before everything. And apparently when they first went to the symbiote planet in Guardians of the Galaxy several years ago, that planet was not actually a planet. It was a bunch of symbiotes that were like formed together to imprison Null. Mm-hmm. And I also, that was pretty cool. all the symbiotes are droppings off of Null. Yeah. Every dropping forms like a symbiote. Yeah, and the Necro Sword is one of his weapons that he made, yeah. which was first introduced in Thor: God of Thunder, which was such an amazing series. In one of the Thor series, I think it's the the newest one, and maybe the one before it. But at the and when we see at the when they see they go forward to the end of time, mm-hmm. and it's God King Thor that is well, it's King Thor that is left, and he is imbued with like the power cosmic and the Phoenix force and like something else. And the only other being left for him to like duel and fight is fucking Loki. Who's imbued with something else and something he else. Has the and he sword. has the necro sword and they have a big fight. And if like Thor wins, he's going to like restore everything about the universe that has been lost. And if Loki wins, everything gets destroyed. And like, of course Thor beats him and blah, 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 blah. But I thought it was really cool that like at the end of time, Look, he has the necro sword. Like yes. that still exists. That's how powerful That's that just thing how is. Power- yeah, I was gonna say yeah. that, that it can contend with Thor with <laughs> Phoenix Force and like cosmic and like, and like Mjolnir and shit, yes. and then the necro sword. <laughs> Unreal, dude. That's shit. So P. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's also the thing about Ghost Rider. He's imbued with the power. He's coated with the power of cosmic. Yeah, that's why Hella. Well, he's also dead. That's why Hella straight murked his ass. What surfer? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she well, impaled him on no. Just said Ghost Rider. No, no, no. Silver Surfer is a. He's coated with the oh, yeah. power cosmic. Okay. But yeah, he also dies. He gets impaled on no sword. Yeah. Well, he get, yeah. Well, Not in, in this. In, in Galactus wins, he's impaled on Mjolnir. You mean Thanos wins? What did I say? Galactus, Galactus wins. wins. Sorry. Yeah, when no, Thanos it's, wins. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's not no. It's Mjolnir. Yeah, he gets impaled on Mjolnir and killed. Mm, yeah. <laughs> eh, fuck the server. But yeah, overall, I I really dug this first year, this first issue. Like, oh my god, yes, dude. this was fucking so. incredible. I am so I hyped I would, to read the I thought rest. I would hate this or just not care. But, but no, now I'm so super good. excited to keep reading. I hate that the fucking first page says one of five. Oh, damn it, really? Yeah. Oh. But it might just be one of five for this arc because the Guardians had one of six, but it was just for that beginning arc. Okay. The final gauntlet. But honestly, I don't know what really are they doing with an ongoing Silver Surfer series right now. Like, what are they really going to do? Like, I don't know enough about the character to know. Uh, if he turns completely black what they completely and turns do. evil or something. True, then yeah, we could have that, but I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked if this is a mini at all. No. Because it's born out of an event that happened in Guardians. And it's also, Donnie has already spoken and uh, there's like, Donnie Cates has already spoken about how, uh, or not Donnie Cates, in the Guardians series, they speak about how in like, after the um, last issue is over, it's like, well, you can write to the editor or whatever, like letters to the editor. Yeah, yeah. Some of that is talking about how Donnie Cates has plans to explore uh, the Ghost Riders meeting each other. And he has plans to explore what Wraith is going to go do because he's oh, yeah, on the he hunt finally for got Null. N- so what so if we see him I wouldn't this? be shocked if this we get a five-issue mini of this and then a five-issue mini of like the Ghost Rider thing and a five-issue mini of like him looking for Null and has Silver Surfer in it. Like we're probably gonna get. A, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a couple five-issue minis that Donny Cates is writing that are all spawned out of the Guardians ongoing. Wouldn't shock me. That'd but, be dope. Oh yeah, I wanted to. 
I remember myself. I wanted to talk about. So the afterword on this, Donny Cates writes this extremely touching and beautiful um, tribute, I guess, to Stan Lee. We talked about how Silver Surfer, if you didn't know, Stan Lee has said was his favorite creation. Was the Silver Surfer. He loved the Silver Surfer. What, it wasn't Peter Parker? I think Peter Parker's his favorite character. <laughs> okay. Like, it's his favorite superhero, but his favorite creation period is the Surfer. That's what it says. And Donnie remembers, like, reading about that, like, when he was a kid. And it's this whole thing where he talks about how he only met, I'm going to give some, he only met Stan Lee, like, a few times. He didn't know him very well. He only met him a couple times. But Stan Lee was, like, his hero, you know? Like, he grew up to be a fucking comic book writer, and Donnie Cates is, like, one of the biggest names at Marvel right now. Like, he's in the room where he gets to sit around with, like, the five people that make all the decisions for Marvel Comics. He's one of them. So he's like, he's made it to what he's wanted to be. And when he was a kid, he went to the signing that Stan Lee was at. And he, he got out there, like, super early. And, like, there was a ton of people out there waiting. And you had to, like, there was so many people that had to, like, enter a raffle and win a chance and win, like, a ticket to go and actually get an autograph. And he fucking won one. So we got to go in and meet Stan Lee and had him sign his book. And he told Stan, he's like, and he's like, so nervous when he's talking to him. He's like, you know, like, I respect, like, and he's a kid. And he's like, I respect everything you've done. I love everything you've done. Like, I could never thank you enough for what you have given me. And Stan just said, sure you can. You can try. And so then Donnie said, and here it is. Here's me trying, Stan. Thank you very much. And this Silver Super Series is him trying to thank Stan Lee. That's awesome. I was like, holy fuck, that's beautiful. That is really cool. Yeah, dude. Ended on a down note right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was very, very like bittersweet. Me yeah, dude, I'm just I'm like tearing up a little bit. Like, man, it was so beautiful. So Donny Cates is gonna put his fucking all onto this, this server series. Well, it's gonna be inc- tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can already tell. It's gonna be incredible, dude. I cannot wait for the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this might. This is up there with uh, Justice League Dark. Dude, you got Odyssey. one issue in, and I'm already like, this is one of my favorite ones we're reading already. <laughs> like, this is incredible. <laughs> I'm loving it. I mean, I, we're not. There's nothing we're reading that I, I actually myself, just I'm limiting like. myself to like six things in my pull list, but I'm, I have to add this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean, yeah. I can see why. Super Super Black. It's fucking incredible so far. I'm just glad I bought this just on a whim. I was like, I'll yeah. just have it on the show. <laughs> and probably won't put give right a here. shit about the series. I'll probably give it to them. I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not giving this to those idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep this shit. Yeah, I like this cover a lot more than like the the normal one that we got, which is just like just his face and everything else is like black. Oh, I like that. Very simple. Makes <laughs> sense. Know. I guess. I oh, will say, like, also the page was, like, it's just, like, him stepping, like, over the page was very weird. Yeah, yeah, where it's all, like, everything's kind of starting to get contorted and he's stepping mm-hmm. over it, yeah. He was, like, all shredded and shit, too. Him going through, oh, yeah, he's jacked. Yeah. He, he has, like, a fucking eight-pack. <laughs> <laughs> he has a Silver Surfer pack. A cosmic, a <laughs> power cosmic eight-pack. <laughs> <laughs> power cosmic abs, let's go. <laughs> That sounds like a good workout regime. It does. <laughs> power cosmic the, the silver Surfer Power Cosmic Workout. <laughs> Any uh, normal man will die doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did survive a black hole. Mm. He survived a lot more than that. Yeah. We're going to see if he can survive Noel. Oh. I or mean, if Noel can survive him. I'm not sure which one is supposed to be. He survived in the other. Noel's primordial, so. Yeah, I mean, he did exist outside like of reality. Silver Surfer's power is still somewhat limited, I guess. I guess because he is like ultimately I mean, the herald of Galactus. Hand. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm excited to see what the hell like where the series goes. I am too. Yeah. I'm excited to see if the Galactus shows up. Yeah. Uh, he is the herald. Maybe he'll just come eat that planet and I kill mean, them they're, all. Pr- they're pretty much like always like in each other's stories at some point, aren't they? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's got to be. All right. Well, I hope this doesn't lead to Franklin Richards being involved at all. <laughs> Because he, like, he put Galactus in, like, a pocket dimension. He's, like, his pet. Like, he did that at one point to him. It's like, man, fuck Franklin Richards. So what's he doing now? I have no idea. Couldn't tell you. Okay. Uh, I don't read Fantastic Four series, so I have no idea what Galactus or... Neither do I. Doing. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a huge Fantastic Four fan. They're all right, I guess, but I don't seek out their series to read them. No, not really. Me yeah. neither. Like, I'll uh, watch the movies that they make, for like, the new Marvel ones, for sure. Didn't Johnny Blaze... Was it, wasn't he at the end of the Guardian 6? Like, when um, Cosmic Ghost Riders... Well... Yeah, Frank when, Castle's in when hell. he Cosmic Ghost Rider melted away to being Frank, and then he like got sent to hell. Johnny Blaze walks up on him. He's like, "Let's have a race." Like, what are you doing here? And he's like, "I'm Johnny Blaze. You want a race?" Yeah, Donnie's gonna explore Why is Johnny what Blaze goes on in there. hell. <laughs> because it's the fucking Ghost Rider. Johnny Blaze, though. Oh, that's t- <laughs> sorry. I'm thinking of what the jo- Johnny Storm. Yeah, Johnny Storm's Human Torch. Okay. Yeah, you're totally confused right now. I am yeah, very Johnny Blaze is Ghost Rider. That's why he's in hell. Why but- am I on this cast? <laughs> 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 yeah, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny Storm is the Human Torch. Okay. Yeah. Johnny Storm is Sue Storm. That's okay. the invisible one. 
All right. They're so, brother and sister. So do you think Frank Castle and Johnny Blaze are going to have a race to see who gets to be Ghost Rider, I guess? I hope they do, and I hope they also pull in the third Ghost Rider to race with them, Robbie Reyes. Okay. That would be dope. Speaking of that, I said it on the last episode, I'm going to say it again to you. Hulu is developing a Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider live action series. And the guy that played Robbie Reyes in S.H.I.E.L.D. is coming back to play him on that show. I think there's a Cosmic Ghost Rider comic series that's out. There is, but Donnie didn't write it. Uh, there's also a current Thanos series out right now somehow that Donnie's not writing. Yeah, I've seen like Child Gamora like on both yeah. covers. Thanos is dead, so I don't know how he has a series right now. It has to be past stuff or something or an alternate Thanos or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. He died twice now. He dies. Uh, yeah, he's died a bunch of times. So. <laughs> he's fucking Thanos. So I'm sure he's still around. He's also in a black hole with Hela. So how are they gonna get out? They yeah, might, I don't know. They don't have Cosmic Ghost or they don't have uh, Silver Surfer. No, but it's Hela. <laughs> yeah. Probably just she teleport to her dimension. Surfboard. Just teleport to her dimension or some shit. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Go to hell and come back. Bring back Thanos. That's how Surfer's gonna end. I mean, the fact that Thanos' body is with her clearly means that like. Well, They're the body exploded, but the fact that Hela's probably still alive means that that quest isn't going to stop. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, it's also Thanos. He's going to come back at some point. I mean, he has to be Thanos. Yeah. He can't be gone forever. Someone will probably someone else will get the Infinity Stone, snap him back in, and he'll be like, all right, thank you. <laughs> He's like, oh, thanks for these, and then snap them away. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no doubt that that's how that will happen. He's <laughs> <laughs> Thanos a piece of shit. <laughs> all right, any other notes you want to end this on? Nope. Just right. that I don't like you and you're fat. That's how I feel about you Facts. guys. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. everyone that watches this. <laughs> no, uh, I think that's it. All right, thanks for watching. If if you're still here by the end of this, we fucking greatly appreciate it. <laughs> we just rambled about I can't fucking bullshit. myself for this long. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you tuning in, checking us out once again. Make sure you hit up all the Omega Level social medias, like them, subscribe to them, send us some comments, comment on the video below what you think about these series, comment, um, let us know what movies you want to see us review in the future and talk about. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in and listening or watching. Race me and crash. Nope. I'm all swamp thing. <laughs>